A very good afternoon to all the participants and delegates. I begin today by acknowledging the contribution of our forefathers who have helped in creating a world based on freedom and human dignity. I extend my respect to people of diverse cultures, faiths, colors, and genders, and pledge to work for equity, inclusivity, peace, and harmony. I, Tripti Singh, along with my co-host, Piksha, student of the MBTS school, welcome you to the first online technical session of sixth edition of the world's first seven-day staggered co-location conference. ICANN 6 is organized by DMB Media School in collaboration with the School of Communication and Creative Arts, Deakin University, Melbourne, Australia, and is sponsored, sponsored by the Indian Council of Social Science Research, ICSSR. This time, ICANN 6 is organized in a staggered format which will take place at four different venues across India and abroad. Phase 1 will be held in Delhi Metropolitan Education, Noida, from 19 to 21 June, and Manav Rashna International Institute of Research and Studies, Faridabad, on 22nd June. Phase 2 will be in Makhanlal Chaturvedi National University for Journalism and Mass Communication, Bhopal, on 21st July, and the Fudil International University, Bangladesh, on 6th to 6th August 2023. I would like to take a moment and introduce organizer of the conference to our audience. Delhi Metropolitan Education is an A-grade premier educational institute affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh in Prasna University, New Delhi, and approved by the Bar Council of India. DMB Media School is one of the most promising media institutes in the country. It offers education. It is recognized as a school focused on the growth of its faculty and students through academic and co-curricular activities. ICANN 6 has come with the theme, identity, culture, agenda-driven newscast with the hashtag cultural identity for diversity. ICANN 6 has support of more than 21 partners. The conference is sponsored by the Indian Council of Social Science Research. Conference partners are IMCR, Gen Section, GMEC, Global Media Education Council. Knowledge partners are Manav Rashna International Institute of Research and Studies, Faridabad, Mahanlal Chaturvedi National University for Journalism and Mass Communication, Bhopal, Admas University, Kolkata, Institute of Applied Medicine and Research, IMCR, Gaziabad, KSF, Keshav Suri Foundation. International partners are Defodel International University, Bangladesh, Institute for International Journalism, Ohio University, USA, Beacon House National University, Pakistan. Media partners are The Policy Times, Jehim Times, Quick News, News 44. ICANN 6 is powered by Asian Media and Cultural Studies Network, Australia, Australia India Film Practitioners and Researchers Network, Australia, Spark, the Student of Council, DME Media School, RIM, Research and Innovation in Media, Research Cell of DME, Richmond Fellowship Society, India, Delhi Branch. Since 2018, DME Media School has been organizing the International Conference, ICANN. The themes for the former editions were India and Changing Aspect of News in ICANN 1, Indian Cinema and Alternate Networks in ICANN 2, Issues of Community Agenda and News in ICANN 3, Information Communication and Artificial Networks in ICANN 4, Inclusivity Convergence and Alternative Negotiations in ICANN 5, Identity, Culture, Agenda-Driven Newscasts in ICANN 6. This unique conference is conceptualized by Dr. Abhi Saxena, Professor and Dean of DMA Media School. He is the convener of ICANN 6. On behalf of DMA Media School, I welcome Dr. Sharmila Kayal. 
she is a very um, you know a, a veteran teacher and researcher she has been associated with icann for long she's been sending papers and was also the part of the review committee of icann she has reviewed papers and given her valuable feedback and i'm sure this session she'll also make the session very interesting by giving her inputs and thank you so much for uh, being there ma'am the session will be co-chaired by professor ashish chatterjee he's a faculty and my student co-host will always you know they'll give a brief profile of all both the members i would like to just add on here that this is the first technical session of the day practically when it comes to the online so we had a uh, inaugural and an uh, elaborated inaugural which was uh, there were 12 guests in the inaugural and a uh, lot of messages from the international speakers and after that there are three sessions which are going right now parallelly one online this technical session the another one is on site technical session and there's one plenary session which is going on in the studio 62 so i am thankful to all the authors all the researchers especially the ones which are the young ones right now i have seen them they are writing some of them are writing for the first time so we will go easy with you so don't worry about it and uh, they have worked on really interesting topics uh so i just want to say that thank you everyone welcome and uh, back to you back to you riyank thank you so much ma'am i'm happy to share that journalism at dme is the official newsletter of dme media school this fortnightly publication covers all the major activities happening in and out of the campus it is a student centric newsletter carried out entirely by them under the supervision of faculty members The Emmy TV is our official YouTube channel where you can find the playlist related to all sessions, lecture, series, film festivals, and conferences. For more information, follow us on our social media handles and YouTube channels, The Emmy TV. Today, we all are here for technical sessions on the topic cultural promotion through craft and design for empowerment of women, tribals, and artisans. The session will be chaired by Sher Dr. Sharmila Kayal. She is an associate professor and head of Department of Media Studies, School of Media and Communication at Kolkata-based Admas University. Dr. Sharmila Kayal has been involved with studies related to media and communication. She takes up the empirical challenges and strategizes in area of media and communication research studies. Dr. Sharmila has done her PhD in mass communication from Pondicherry Central University. Apart from that. She worked as a full-time faculty member of UGC at on course of journalism and mass communication in Fakir Mohan Autonomous College, Balasore, Odisha. Her area of interest includes advertising, health communication, audiovisual culture, and communication. She has published paper in Journal of National and International Repute and presented paper in various conferences held in Europe, Thailand, and more. Her research project has been accepted at University of Toronto, Canada, in year two thousand and twenty. Now, I would like to introduce our co-chair of this session, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Ashish Chatterjee. Sir is design graduate from Delhi College of Art, University of Delhi, and post graduate in mass communication from Guru Jambeshwar University, Hisa, with twenty four year of print media industry and twenty year of academic experience in India and abroad. He had been invited by Times of Oman, national newspaper of Sultanate of Oman, to redesign their newspaper. He had published a design text, Design and Graphics: A Beginner's Guide, in 2018. Conducted several workshop on design and graphics in India and abroad. He participated and presented research paper in national and international conferences. Expertise in designing magazine and newsletter. Designed more than hundred newsletter for various corporates. Now I would like to hand over this session to our co-chair to begin the session. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me before before I start, let me tell you all these eight topics which I'm seeing in front of me are very close to my heart, right? Because I'm a creative person and I can see the the, the papers like that, right? So good afternoon, everyone. Um, let us start the presentation with the permission of the chair, ma'am. could we start yes please go ahead thank you thank you so much so so our first uh, the the topic or the presentation is impact of technology on the craft of bangle making a case study of firozabad artisans and vendors 
authored by Sania and Vidushi Pachuri, uh, under the guidance of Dr. Sonali Srivastava, Assistant Professor, Left Panchkula. Over to you, Sania. So today we will be presenting our paper on the topic, Impact of Modernization and Technology on the Craft of Bangle Making. And I would like to share my screen. So uh, in this presentation, we'll go through the introduction, review of literature, aim and objectives of the research methodology, the data collection, analysis, and the conclusion of the research paper. Over to Vidushi. Good afternoon, everyone. So bangles are sort of adornment that are mostly worn by South Asian men and women in various styles. And they are a significant point of confluence between art and aesthetics. And they have been in our culture for so long. So, I mean, we must have seen our, uh, mom, our moms or our grandmothers wearing those. And in Uttar Pradesh, in Ferozabad, this city is the largest glass bangle making city in whole India and in the world. There are only two cities apart. Apart from Ferozabad, there's only Hyderabad in Pakistan that extends to makes glass panels and supplies to world colleagues. So uh, about the significance, we all know that bangles hold a very crucial place, crucial place in our culture. They have been an indigenous craft that lacks the recognition it requires. So while we were doing our initial step of the research, we found out that there are many research papers written on the living conditions of the Ferozabad vendors and artisans, like how they live and how they're doing child labor and stuff. But there are no research papers that talk about the urbanization, the expansion and the economic growth of the craft. So our research paper fills that gap. Over to Vidushi. So there's a theory by Karl Marx that states that in order to shape the market, the producers, or the stakeholders are the deciding factors. So those who have the means of production in their hands, they will decide the course of the market. So we test this theory or we get to know about it in our research, through our research paper. Next slide, please. So the aim of our research was to study the impact of advancement in technologies on the art of bangle making in Ferozabad district of Uttar Pradesh. And the objectives are to study economic growth patterns with the concept of modernization in e-commerce platforms and to observe the popularity increase and recognition in international markets. So we did qualitative research and we interviewed with artisans and the type of sample which we used was snowball sample. So we talked to artisans and then we get to know about the other artisans that they know of. And like that, we interviewed several artists. And so we uh, we decided on two interview schedules. One for was the artisans, and one was for the vendors. Uh, through this interview schedule, we get to know about their living conditions and how they have seen the change in technology over the years since the past generations, and and how they have been passed down through their fathers, or if they have uh, created their new businesses. So these were the interview schedules for vendor. And for the data collection, we interviewed around 16 to 17 vendors, and the list is written down here. Coming to the analysis. So there was a shift in technology since past few years. So earlier, parties operated with coal were used to make bangles, but now GAI provides LPG. So due to pollution and other factors, there was a shift from coal to LPG, which, which was earlier provided by the government. And now the furnaces were operated with natural gas. And also the other shift in technology was earlier, the roller, which was used to roll the bangles and the rod on which it was kept. Now motor was attached to it, which reduced the human labor. The demand and market size. Due to effect of modernization, the market size was reduced and it was mostly confined to the rural, rural areas as a major customer. 
for urban areas and international markets, there were only special occasions on which the demand of bangles was there. So this some, these are some of the findings that, uh, that we found out during our research. So while talking to the vendors and the artisans, we found out that Earlier, the profit margins were around 8 to 10 rupees per bangle, but now they have decreased to 2 to two to 3 rupees per bangle. They have faced losses due to return policies of e-commerce sites. Due to the uh, policy of 7-day return, people, they get the uh, orders, but uh, they get uh, returned due to the uh, return policy. With the introduction of e-commerce, it has become easier with respect to marketing and promotion of their work, but uh, but it does not significantly impact their growth and the popularity of the craft. Also, the e-commerce uh, tie-ups like Instama. So even though natural gas has been a bliss for the lives of uh, artisans who are making those because earlier they were facing a lot of health issues, but the subsidy of natural gas is proving to be very costly for both the artisans and vendors. And due to this, the profit margins have been significant, have significantly reduced. And also due to modernization, women these days do not prefer wearing bundle that much. So only on special occasions and like as it is confined to rural areas. So major sales is from villages only. And as a result, while talking to various artisans and vendors, they are planning to shift or switch their professions in, in order for a better search, in, in search for a better economic opportunity and to sustain their families. So it is truly becoming a dead cost. So thank you so much, everyone, for the for your time and listening to our yes. presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So Sharmila, ma'am. Yeah, I am keeping a note for every presentation. I'll be asking or we will be discussing at the last. Okay. okay. We'll have the next presentation. Sayed has requested that he can go next. He can go next. I think Sayed we can take you, but he's saying his laptop is creating problems. Sayed, sir, Sayed ka introduction if you can give. Yeah. So uh, the next we'll give a chance to uh, Sayed. Uh, it's issues of community ownership in waste management, a case study on waste warriors tabish hassan along with dr rita devi assistant professor hpkv business school school of commerce and management studies central university of himachal pradesh hp yes sir you can start thank you so much sir am i audible so my name is sayed tabish hassan i am currently doing mba from central university of himachal pradesh my topic is issues of community ownership and waste management so about the introduction, waste management is one of the most emerging social problem across the globe. And in India, it's uh, the waste management process is about to build after the Swachh Bharat mission started by the BJP government in 2014. So my major focus was how the community can take the ownership about the initiative of the Swachh Bharat mission and how the community can build their own solid waste management system in their own localities. About 3.4 million met metric tons of plastic waste is which India generates on a daily basis, uh, out of which only 30% is being recycled and the rest is either dumped in the landfills or unidentified. So waste management is one of the major problem and it is my Personal concern because from background, <clears throat> I'm very much concerned about the environment and I always wanted to contribute something towards the environment. Apart from being a marketing student, I also want to join the development sector. So the aim of this study is to understand the critical criticality about the effectiveness of community ownership and to understand the effectiveness of individual participation in issues of waste management. So about the issue and the waste forest. So waste forest is an NGO based out of Dehradun, but started in Dharamshala. About the background, in 2008, the journey was started by a British lady named Jodi Underhill, who came to India as a tourist and visited several places in India. And when she came to Dharamshala in 2009, there's a 
track in called Triund track where she gone and she saw a lot of waste littered here and there and people are not understanding the problem. So she stayed back and started doing the cleanup by herself only. And after a few months, the community started collaborating with her and saying that she is coming from outside and helping us to make a sustainable environment for us because the Dharamshala is one of the most tourist heavy locations in Himachal Pradesh or in India. So saving the environment was the major concern because the environment is the one thing that the Himalayan regions shows. The nature, the beauty of the nature, the mountains. So it was a concern for everyone. And also for me, because I'm currently doing my masters from Dharamshala only. The, I'm based in Dharamshala right now. So the journey started in 2008. Then as a mountain cleaners, a volunteer group started by Jyoti Underhill. And after in 2012, she registered Waste Warrior Society as a non-profit organization in Dehradun. And after that, it, they started working in Dehradun, Dharamshala and Corporate National Park in 2012. And after that, they continued their journey and they, they started growing into different, different locations of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. About the case study, uh, I use the case study method and I interviewed some of the employees of Waste Warriors based in Dharamshala. So, Itosha Chatterjee, Associate Director, Himachal Pradesh, Mr. Shashank Prabhu, Senior Manager, Projects, and Mr. Mohammed Kaif, Senior Associate. So, the res research is based on the how Waste Warriors is uh, contributing towards their cause with the help of the community. How the community is taking the ownership of the initiative. I'll tell you more about this in the findings. My screen is still visible. No. Wait. Okay. So about the findings, uh, they shared a story where in 2019 they did a. Uh, so the base, the story started uh, doing the regular cleanups of the train trail, and in 2019, on the New Year Eve of 2019, they went to train and they did a cleanup, and they. They collected around 480 bags of uh, waste, 8 metric tons. So after doing, they understand that doing the cleanups is not the only solution. And after that, they started building the capacity of the community, the local residents of around the trail, the local villagers. And currently, uh, after building the capacity, after doing the awareness activities, after the IC, Currently, they are doing the cleanups on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, but the impact was that they, currently they are collecting only six to eight bags, which is hardly 100 kgs on a week. So, but to know that <clears throat> how an organization and a government can build a solution with on the basis of community ownership. So. With the findings, I got to know that local self-reliance is very important because doing the cleanups are not the only solution for them of the locals. Improvement of environment sustainability because the only the, when the locals are involved, they can easily understand the situation and they can see the impact. When the tourist is tourist footfall is getting low, then they understand that the the environment is getting affected and their income is getting low because the low footfall of the tourists and the management of resources effectively because the now the waste wise is not sending a whole team they are sending only one or two people from their organization to initiate the cleanup and the community will take the ownership and the social benefit is like the <clears throat> wealth generated from the tourists and the economy is boosted because of this these all the social benefits and the taboo which they feel was now getting erased about the waste and something stuff. So these all are the findings. Okay, so thank after... you. I think your time is up, uh, Sayan. Next one is uh, design intervention and craft marketing and exploration of challenges faced by ethnic artisans in Pipli, Odisha. 
This is authored by Srishti Anaga and Dr. Sonali Srivastava, Assistant Professor, Nift Panchkula. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a very warm good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I am Srishti, and with my batchmate Anaga, I would like to present this paper that we have written on the PPT aptic work of Odisha. So I would like to share my screen for the same. So before we start, we would like to give you a brief introduction about the craft. This craft has originated from Odisha and is Indian state known for its main, uh, mainly uh, the ancient Hindu temples. Uh, the craft which it consists is Patachitra, rock painting, sand art, and the applique. Uh, in the applique craft, different pattern patches are sewn onto the larger piece of fabric to form designs. Or a picture. Uh, a small history um, in Odisha, the they have Jagannath Yatra, um, in which they used to have an umbrella over Lord Jagannath, uh, on which the weekly uh, applic work is being done, uh, which uh, which came to uh, the emergence of this craft. So what are design interventions? Uh, design interventions are a way to modify a design to make it into something different from its default state. So that is basically what we were looking for in our research. Uh, like what are the design interventions done with this craft? For the review of literature, we have seen uh, looked into these three pa uh, research papers primarily. The first one being uh, uh, a Korean paper by student Jinyan Gu and uh, Byun Gak An. Uh, so it's a collaborative design intervention about the... So in this paper, they've studied traditional Chinese crafts and they have looked into the three ways of interventions. The second one is the design intervention and craft revival study by Harita Kapoor and Suruchi Mitar. In this one, it's purely a research paper-based study. So they have looked into different research papers and from those they have concluded how the in design interventions help with the craft revival. The third one being uh, the problems, uh, the challenges, particularly the marketing challenges faced by artisans uh, for, the, uh, for the state of Odisha. So this is basically for all the crafts of Odisha, the handloom sarees, the PPT work and everything and how they have marketing the craft. Okay, so the uh, our aim is to analyze the challenges faced by the PT applique uh, craftsmen and the contemporizations done with the craft by the designers. And the objective was uh, to uh, the challenges faced by the craftsmen and the contemporizes, uh, contemporizing of the craft and on what basis. So, so this yeah, the method we chose uh, was qualitative, two was interviews, and there were two samples. One was for artisans and academicians of the craft, and the second one was for the people working with the applique work, um, the designers. Uh, this is our interview schedule. So we had two schedules. The first one, as Anaga said, for the academicians and the artisans, and the second one for the designers. Uh, the interviews that we took, so three from designers, uh, two from teachers, and the sixth one was from an artisan and a distributor. So he had a lot of, basically he had a lot of artisans working under him as well, and he was also personally an artisan. So we also talked to the people who work under him, uh, one of them including his sister Mamta, who was also an artisan. These are the interviews. So uh, Manorama Pati, a teacher from Sidak, a teacher of NIFT Kolkata, who was previously working in NIFT Bhubaneswar and had some experience in working with the design interventions of PP Aptic work as well. Uh, Benudhar, the artisan and distributor. Uh, the art. Your time is exceeding. We uh, just so come to that. the data analysis then. Alright. Yeah. Take the the, the data analysis. The uh, first we have the challenges that are faced by the artisans. The first one was the advertising by government. How government is insufficient with the ad advertising that uh, 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 a respondent of ours, as she said, was that. Uh, the government still uses the same way of advertising 10 years later 
and the second one uh, the second challenge the artisans changing their jobs because they are underpaid and because of the low cost of living uh, the third one being uh, the construction of a bypass road because of which the a, a lot of tourists have stopped coming to that area in which peepli craft uh, usually f- flourished and now the contemporization in that we have seen three types of interventions first one being firdausi tabassum uh, second satyam harana and the third one being oma sharmila for the conclusion we uh, saw the different methods of intervention which uh, uh, by three different designers which could fit into the study that we have uh, seen by the korean students and about the chinese crafts and in that we can analyze how the craft has been contemporized like the ways of contemporization and the second one the challenges which uh, as dr manjushmita dasan chaudhary uh, venkatesh uh, venkata krishna study also recognizes so suggestions we would like to give is that the government uh, should initiate digital media lessons to for the artisans so that it will prom- uh, promote for uh, independently for uh, the artisans and the designers and it will also create an awareness about the craft also a label that is directed towards the youth uh, with designs that can be quickly made wind up, quickly wind up yes sir where with scraps of a fabric from the design houses this will help uh, help the artisans and designers to come together uh, to work in a particular direction thank you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, our next uh, presentation is on uh, entwining the brand identity through tribal weaves a case study of odisha handlooms authored by arya nagpal and dr sonali srivastava assistant professor neft panchkumar over to you thank you so for Arya. introducing me yeah i'll just share my screen i hope it's visible to everybody and i'm audible it is the only thing try and finish in 5 minutes or you can take one more minute to try yes sir definitely okay so uh, i'll briefly take you to the contents of uh, my presentation which begins with the conception aim and objectives methodology tools interview and findings content analysis and conclusions and references so uh, the conception of uh, this uh, this research uh, started with me finding the independent factor which is the handlooms and the indigenous weaver tribes of india specifically the odisha region since there are so many weaver tribes in odisha uh, so many weaver tribes in all over india i will be focusing on the ones from odisha such as sambalpuri santhal and uh, my dependent factor which was how its brands how are brands created by a mediator so these uh, these sarees these local uh, handloom artists are there but how does a mediator take the local elements and create a brand through that and convey all those heritage handlooms to an audience significance of my study is basically as i said how are the local craft elements helping the mediator to find a middle ground between the two which is the local inspiration the handlooms and the requirement of the target market my aim was to examine the unique characteristics and cultural significance of tribal weaves of orisha and how brand identity is influenced by those unique characteristics objectives were to identify local craft elements and their contributions and to understand the role of social media and internet based marketing and if it's actually helping increase the popularity methodology used was an in depth interview with miss arunima ghosh who is the founder of earthy styles which is a brand which sources uh, sarees from orisha and uh, gives it out or sells it to a market in noida and uh, then was the case study of rumo patra and two content analysis one of galangaban and one of earthy styles this was my interview schedule and we'll moving on to my findings uh so when i took the interview with the founder of uh, the style i got to know that their brand values are environment friendly in terms of mark- making and getting uh like the packaging and all uh they promote sustainability moving on to their logo 
there was uh, it i identified that there is the dokra motifs which is the uh, enchanting folk motifs of the dokra art and it's a tribal culture and heritage of india which is a reference from the tribe of dokra and they've used it in a in the logo the there is a terracotta background on the logo which they always use which uh, signifies the earthy nature as the brand suggests and the brand values are there uh, this style content analysis gave me an idea about how they propagate the arts and the crafts of india to their audience they are very focused on uh, propagating that the earthy nature of crafts and they post quizzes on their uh, facebook page moving on to galanga ban which is uh, a brand by miss lipsa hembram who is an ift graduate and she uh, her brand when i did the content analysis of her logo i found similar uh, local craft elements which was my target to the to find which i found weaving threads in her uh, in the logo there was a union in the typography of the logo used in the g and g the center was a union uh, signifying her brand and how it promotes the traditional craft elements combining with the culture uh, with the contemporary designs of hers these are some of her products the santuli sarees here is also a set that they designed uh, to be presented in vogue magazine in which also they have contributed included a lot of cultural elements such as the brassware the brass uh, items that they have kept in the background and also the um, the colors that they've used here there was another uh, case study about mr bhimo patra who is a famous designer and he's now uh, been designing for jennifer lopez michelle obama and all those people and he has taken this handloom craft to an other extent in uh, international position and he has done all of that by combining it interesting just a positions as he's been known to me and also by his instagram and the interviews that he has given in vogue magazine and verb magazine where he says that he has a lot of indian influences in his in his uh, designs which are in a very high demand in uh, international market he has also done the handloom revival project which i got to know a lot uh, which i learned a lot about that it is actually really helpful if a, if a big designer takes up such small crafts from from his native place and uh, spreads it out to the wide international market it is a huge point of inter, uh, attraction for the international market so in conclusion to what i synthesized from my research now is that studying both brands uh, earthy style garangaban and the third one uh, bhimo patra i have understood that their style of presentation the logo and the creative elements even their social media posts have a lot to say about the local craft elements of odisha and how they bring up the craft from such a region and portray it out to the international market culture is a gateway through which stimuli are received which uh, christian flenstein and i both believe in and hence adding the cultural and traditional elements to brand imagery it can really attach a healthy weight to the brand and to the target audience that they are uh, uh, supplying to uh, also the social media presence and the network is helping brands a lot to propagate their local craft elements which is now. keeping the oh, heritage oh, alive yes uh, these are the references and thank you women practitioners authored by thruva diva dr sonali srivastava assistant professor dev panchkula over to you Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we, Dr. Van Deva, student of Nef Panchkula, under the guidance of our teacher, Mrs. Sonali Shivastav, will be presenting our research on the impact of crocheting on women's mental health. We will discuss the aims and objective of the study and methodology and data collection. Then we will talk about the switch on, data. Switch on your video. Switch on your video. Okay. So crochet refers to the process of creating fabric by interlocking loops of yarn using a hook. it has been intensively studied and been recognized as having some positive mental health benefits since it requires concentration it serves as a diversion and can draw people's attention away from issues like anxiety and stress uh, crochet has been a popular craft since ages but it has gained a lot of importance after the covid times here are a few researches which we had studied 
which are related to the impact of crocheting on mental health. So the aim of our research is to study the impact of crocheting on mental health of women. And the objectives are to study the impact of crocheting in promoting creativity and allowing for self-expression, the relationship between crochet and self-confidence, how crochet helps in the financial stability of the crochet, and the impact of crocheting in reducing stress. For data collecting, uh, a qualitative method of data collection was opted. Qualitative data was collected through interviews and focus group discussion based on in an interview schedule. To collect data, women crochet practitioners of different age groups were approached and in-person interviews were taken with women crochet practitioners from Nirp Panchkula. To collect more data, a place had to be identified where women of different age group could be found together suitable for discussion. So a park was visited. Those who couldn't be interviewed personally were interviewed over the phone. And apart from these, a women-led organization named Choti Siyasha was approached. And in the end, an interview was conducted with a psychologist from a uh, qualified source who could validate our research. We made an interview schedule, uh, which was used to conduct interviews and focus group discussions. Uh, the interviews and focus group discussion are listed here. So we also visited an organization called Choti Siyasha, which is aimed at empowering women and nurturing indigenous crafts. So we interviewed a group of 10 artisans. Uh, based on the qualitative data collected from the interviews and focus group discussion, it was found that majority of the participants felt a sense of calmness while doing crochet and they described it as a therapeutic hobby. Crocheting makes them feel more productive and hence they feel an accomplishment after completing a project. Since uh, crocheting requires concentration, it helps get rid of negative emotions and increase concentration. Encouragement and appreciation further help in increasing self-confidence. Older adults also face issues like weak eyesight and cervical pain while crocheting for long hours and some are bound to stop because of that. While practicing in a group, their productivity increases and a few women from the organization Choti Siyasha stated that they feel more independent as they no longer have to ask money from their husbands. And they also uh, use crochet as a medium to express their creativity in ways like attaching beads to the crochet dupatta borders. And it was also found that working under someone can make crocheting less enjoyable and restrict their creativity. Uh, then we interviewed Mahima Sadhu, a psychologist at NIF, and we asked her about the use of crochet as therapy and its effect on mental health. So interviewing the psychologist gave us a deeper insight about the psychological aspect of crocheting. So on being asked about uh, whether crochet helps in improving mental health or not, she stated that when people are suffering from mental health, talk therapy doesn't always work. So art therapy is used in that case. And crafts like stitching and crochet are often used in art therapy. Crochet requires a strong sense of uh, cognitive association and the monotonous pattern used creates a calming effect. She also added that crocheting can help in forming social connections. So people suffering from poor mental health do not tend to isolate themselves. It also helps in increasing concentration and mindfulness. And people with mental health issues often have low self-confidence. So anything that they make with their hands give them a sense of accomplishment. Also, the kind of colors and patterns that they use also tell a lot about the, their mood. Uh, in the end, she also added that uh, women suffer more from anxiety and depression, whereas men are more likely to abuse substances. Uh, we Ryan, concluded Ryan our concludes fast, you have one minute left. Yes, sir. We concluded our research according to each objective of the study. It was concluded that crochet is a craft that is used as a form of art therapy and provides an avenue for self-expression. The choice of color and pattern uh, of in crochet and other forms and art can reflect individual's mood and phase of life. It enhances concentration and mindfulness and boosts self-esteem and encouragement and appreciation further help in increasing their self-confidence. Uh, by selling crochet products, a person can feel more independent and those who do not use it as a medium to earn money, use it as a medium to express their creativity. Uh, the re repetitive and calming nature of crochet patterns reduce stress. And practicing in a group can help socialize, uh, people socialize and reduce stress. Uh, these are some of our suggestions and scope for further study. The impact of crocheting on different age group, other genders and cultural background can be further researched upon. And competitive study about the effects of crocheting to other forms of art therapy like painting and music can be done to provide insight into the unique benefits of crocheting.
impact of crocheting on people suffering from specific mental health disorders can be studied and how uh, crocheting can reduce stress levels in higher education students can be studied then introduction to crafts like crochet in early stages of school can help in development of cognitive functions thank you thank you so uh, next presentation uh, is doodarshan ki yatra vidyant shrinkhala rag rag mein ganga ek adhyayan authored by prathisha pawar and dr sukhnandan singh patrakarita evam jan sanchar dev sanskriti vishwavidyalay haridwar uttarakhand prathisha yes sir pranam sir yes aap sabhi ko mera pranam mera jo topic hai wo hai doodarshan ki yatra vidyan shrinkhala rag rag mein ganga ek adhyayan क्योंकि तो मैंने अपने रिसर्च जो हमारे गाइड थे सुखनंदन सर उनके अंडर में रहकर की है इस रिसर्च पेपर में जो कंटेंट यहाँ पे पीपीटी मैंने इंक्लूड किया है वो कुछ इस प्रकार से है जिसमें हम इसमें जो रग रग में गंगा प्रोग्राम है उसका इंट्रोडक्शन इस अध्ययन की जो आवश्यकता है वो किस प्रकार से है मैंने कौन कौन से साहित्यिक सर्वेक्षण किए हैं इस शोध को करने के पीछे मेरे क्या उद्देश्य रहे हैं उसके साथ ही मैंने शोध कार्य को पूर्ण करने में किस प्रकार की क्रियाविधि का उपयोग किया है मेरी शोध की क्या सीमाएं हैं इसकी प्रासंगिकता किस प्रकार से है सामाजिक अकादमिक और प्रोफेशनल रूप में महत्वपूर्ण बिंदु जो मैंने कंटेंट एनालिसिस किया इसके बाद निकल कर आए हुए उपसंधार एवं सजेशन तो सबसे पहले हम परिचय के बारे में बात करेंगे इसमें कि रग रग में गंगा प्रोग्राम है क्या तो जब हम बात करते हैं दो में प्रधान हमारे जो प्रधानमंत्री है श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी उनके द्वारा एक नया इनिशिएटिव लाया गया था जिसमें है हमारे देश की जो राष्ट्रीय नदी है जो हमारी राष्ट्रीय धरोहर है गंगा नदी जो कि न केवल वैज्ञानिक रूप से महत्व रखती है बल्कि जैविक आध्यात्मिक एवं सांस्कृतिक रूप से भी हम सभी के रग रग में बच रही है उसकी स्वच्छता और उसके क्या बोलते कायाकल्प हेतु एक योजना लाई गई थी नमामि गंगे योजना तो ये जो प्रोग्राम है रग रग में गंगा नमामि गंगे योजना के तहत भारत की राष्ट्रीय प्रसारण सेवा जो की दूरदर्शन है इसके द्वारा अनुप्रसारित एक यात्रा वितान श्रृंखला है जो कि वर्तमान समय में यात्रा वितान के बदलते स्वरूप के साथ ही गंगा को स्वच्छ व निर्मल बनाने हेतु चलाई जाने वाली योजना की वर्तमान स्थिति एवं बदलाव को दर्शाती है हम सभी जानते हैं कि दूरदर्शन जब उसकी स्थापना हुई थी 1959 में तो उसके बाद से ही यह मीडिया का एकमात्र ऐसा माध्यम है जो की सबसे लेकर अभी तक अपने उद्देश्यों के अनुसार चलता आ रहा है हम देख है कि वह किस प्रकार से हमारे देश की कला व संस्कृति को ऐतिहासिक धरोहर को उनके प्रति जागरूकता ला रहा है उसके लिए कार्य कर रहा है तो इसी दिशा में एक महत्वपूर्ण पहल की है दूरदर्शन ने नमामि गंगे के द्वारा रग रग में गंगा एक भारतीय टेलीविजन यात्रा श्रृंखला के रूप में नेक्स्ट मैन अब हम बात करते हैं कि इस शोध की आवश्यकता क्या है यह शोध क्यों आवश्यक है तो हम सभी जानते हैं कि आधुनिकीकरण के इस युग में मीडिया के क्षेत्र में कितने सामसामयिक परिवर्तन हुए तो इस रिसर्च के माध्यम से ये दर्शाना है कि किस प्रकार से दूरदर्शन आज भी अपने उद्देश्यों की पूर्ति हेतु तो कार्य कर रहा है दूसरा ये कि पारंपरिक मीडिया जिसे मैंने दूरदर्शन को लिया है वह किस प्रकार से डिजिटल मीडिया हम सभी जानते हैं कि डिजिटल मीडिया में और ट्रेडिशनल मीडिया में कितना अंतर है तो उसको दर्शा रहा है फिर हम इसमें ये जानेंगे की दूरदर्शन जो है वो किस प्रकार से इस प्रोग्राम के जरिए हम जानते हैं कि समय समय पर बहुत सारी राजनीतिक पार्टी आती है क्योंकि तो नाना प्रकार की योजनाएं जो है समय समय पर केवल लोकप्रियता पाने के लिए लाती है लेकिन उसका जमीनी स्तर पर प्रभाव कितना है ये हम सभी जानते हैं कि कई बार तो ये होता है कि इन्फॉर्मेशन ही नहीं मिल पाती है कई बार लोगों को पता ही नहीं होता कि इसके अंदर हो क्या रहा है तो ये है कि दूरदर्शन किस प्रकार से दर्शकों के मध्य पारदर्शिता ला रही है इस योजना के प्रति साहित्यिक सर्वेक्षण की बात की है मैम नेक्स्ट तो मेरा जो टॉपिक है रग रग में गंगा एक भारतीय टेलीविजन यात्रा श्रृंखला कट सामग्री विश्लेषण इससे जुड़ी जो है मुझे कुछ खास इन्फॉर्मेशन और कुछ लिटरेचर ज्यादा प्राप्त नहीं हुए लेकिन जो भी है वो कुछ इस प्रकार से है और इसके जब मैंने स्टडी की तो इसके बाद मुझे ये जानकारी प्राप्त हुई है कि इस शोध पत्र में जो है नमामि गंगे के बारे में तो बताया गया है लेकिन जैसे कि हम जानते हैं कि नमामि गंगे योजना और रग रग में गंगा के बीच में कितना रिलेशन रहा है तो इस पर अभी तक किसी प्रकार की शोध नहीं किया गया है तो मीडिया की ओर से इस रिक्तव्यवस्था को पूर्ण करने का प्रयास मेरे द्वारा इस शोध में किया गया है और शोध के उद्देश्य है रग रग नेक्स्ट टाइम में रग रग के गंगा एक भारतीय टेलीविजन यात्रा श्रृंखला का सामग्री विश्लेषण करना यात्रा वृतांत के बदलते स्वरूप को दर्शाना 
इस कार्यक्रम की अकादमिक प्रोफेशनल एवं सामाजिक क्षेत्र में प्रासंगिकता को जानना इसके साथ ही नमामि गंगे योजना एक सफलतम योजना है यह केवल प्रचार के लिए चलाई जा रही है इसके बारे में इसका मूल्यांकन करना जब हम बात करते हैं इसकी प्रविधि की तो इसके लिए मैंने गुणात्मक और अंतर्वस्तु विश्लेषण मीन्स क्वालिटेटिव एंड कंटेंट एनालिसिस किया है जिसमें प्राइमरी डेटा के रूप में मैंने टीवी प्रोग्राम्स एंड बुक्स को प्रेफर किया दैन सेकेंडरी डेटा के लिए वेबसाइट्स आर्टिकल्स एंड मैगजीन्स और अदर रिसोर्सेज को जब हम बात करते हैं लिमिटेशन की तो ये जो प्रोग्राम है ये जो रिसर्च है वो सिर्फ दूरदर्शन के इस प्रोग्राम पे बेस्ड है और इसके अंतर्गत सिर्फ एक प्रोग्राम को चूज किया गया है इसके अलावा यहाँ पे इसकी प्रासंगिकता दी गई किस प्रकार से ये एकेडमिक और सोशली अपना कार्य करेगा देन कंटेंट एनालिसिस के बाद जो महत्वपूर्ण बिंदु आए हैं नेक्स्ट साइड में तो इस प्रोग्राम को जब हम बात करते हैं कि इसमें क्या स्पेसिफिक रहा तो फर्स्ट तो इसका शीर्षक सेकेंड इसका जो डायरेक्शन था थर्ड इसका जो कॉन्सेप्ट था धीरे धीरे कंक्लूड कर दिए फोर्थ वन था स्टार एंकर देन जब हम बात करते हैं इसके एनालिसिस की कि इसके बाद हमने क्या लिया तो इसमें मेरा जो कंक्लूजन और जो मेन पॉइंट्स निकल गया है वो ये है कि यह कार्यक्रम जो है ट्रेवलॉग सीरीज जो है तो लिटरेचर से लेके टेलीविजन में किस प्रकार से ट्रेवलॉग ने प्रवेश किया है एंटर किया है उसके बारे में जो ट्रांसपेरेंसी आई जो परिवर्तन आया उसको दर्शाता है और ये गंगा नदी के बारे में उसके सभी महत्व को उजागर करता है उसके साथ ही दूरदर्शन की भूमिका और किस प्रकार से दूरदर्शन फ्रेंड्स के साथ अपने आप को आगे बढ़ा रहा है अपने मौलिक कर्तव्य को पूरा करते हुए ये दर्शाया गया है इसमें एक एक ड्रॉबैक भी रहा था कि इसका ज्यादा विज्ञापन नहीं हो पाया था प्रोग्राम का तो इसके बारे में ज्यादा जानकारी लोगों को नहीं मिल पाई थी तो ये इसका एक ड्रॉबैक था देन कंक्लूजन तो इस लघु शोध को करके यह निष्कर्ष सामने आया है कि रग रग में गंगा कार्यक्रम पर अभी तक कोई बड़ा एवं सच में शोध नहीं हुआ है शोध यात्रा वितान कार्यक्रमों में दूरदर्शन की भूमिका को स्पष्ट करता है क्योंकि इस कार्यक्रम का जनता के ऊपर एक खासा प्रभाव था अतः यह निष्कर्ष सामने आता है कि दूरदर्शन यात्रा वितान की भूमिका को महत्व देता है सरकारी योजनाएं धरातल पर कितनी प्रभावी है इसको भी शोध में बताया गया है जिससे निष्कर्ष निकलता है की टेलीविजन के माध्यम से सरकारी योजनाओं के क्रियान्वयन की स्थिति को ज्यादा बेहतर तरीके से समझा जा सकता है ओके सर थैंक यू सर Uh, Megan's paper is effective yes, way to change communication interventions for wash programs in India. A case study of Swachh Bharat Mission, authored by Megha Sharma, research scholar, and Dr. Maithali Ganji, professor, Faculty of Media Studies and Humanities, Manav Rachna International Institute of Research and Studies, Faridabad. Over to you, Megha. Thank you so much, sir. So I'll request somebody from the DME team to kindly present my presentation because my internet is having a bandwidth issue. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being uh, so patient. I know we've been uh, sitting on our screens with this, so I will try to quickly take you through a few slides on my research paper, which aims to uh, do a case study analysis on how behavior change communication interventions are a key component in WASH programs. And when I say WASH programs, this is specific to one program which is the swachh bharat mission so quickly uh, introducing uh, it was uh, moving to the next slide ma'am yeah so quickly introducing so development programs have always been planned and strategically uh, you know curated for different target audiences in order to increase uh, the quality of life or make the quality of life of its target audience better in various ways and one such example of a developmental program that was launched by the government of india in 2014 was the swachh bharat mission the idea behind swachh bharat mission was centered around two key components which were first that india wanted to become an open defecation free open defecation was a problem in the country preceding to so many years and a lot of kids especially were facing a lot of health problems related to lack of proper sanitation facilities in their areas the second component of the mission was to improve the solid uh, waste management systems in the country and why the government was now 
dedicated to making sure that everybody had access to the right kind of sanitation facilities, be it toilets, be it water. It was now important to understand that the access was one part of the problem, but the other part of the problem was that people didn't know how to use these uh, facilities. People didn't know the benefits that they could have for using the correct sanitation uh, methods. So eventually it was thoughtfully curated in the Swachh Bharat mission, moving to the next slide, that information education and com uh, communication was a key component because that was how you could change behaviors, not just bring awareness, but also ensure that people see value and uh, can follow steps to reach towards a healthier sanitary environment. Communication initi initiatives, like I said, have been implemented throughout Swachh Bharat mission uh, in various stages. And that has been seen that at different stages of the mission, different types of communication channels and models have been implemented to bring about the desired behavior change. For example, the mass media was initially used to break information into people to let them know what sanitation is, how toilet was not a bad word, was also one big communication piece that was run by the government. And this study in particular is basically an amalgamation of few case studies that were a few reports and papers that were studied to understand that how effective and important behavior change communication has been for Swachh Bharat mission in particular. Moving ahead, there are a few theories because there are two key components here. One is uh, bringing about the correct behavior at individual level and the second is at community level. So while we do take into account the different types of models or theories that have been you know, picked up and implemented because they have shown success in the past. But from an individual level, the two key theories that were seen uh, becoming a part of SBM were first the health belief model. So uh, briefly to concisely explain, this model talks about that how if a person feels that a particular health challenge is severe for them, or following a certain practice could be beneficial to them, they are more likely to adopt it in their lives. They are more likely to practice those uh, you know, uh, activities that are being communicated to them. The second uh, component in the SBCC theory that was used under the Swachh Bharat mission was around the theory of reasoned action, which in, in, in brief suggests that there are basically four key components to a changed behavior to a change in action, which is of course the behavior, the context, the action which has been taking part from so many years or which has been a continued practice. The second part is the attitude because a lot of number of times it was observed that in spite of people having information, in spite of knowing what is the right behavior, it was their attitude which kept them away from following certain practices. And third is the subjective norms, which briefly suggest that people behave um, according to how their relevant groups or their families or their friends or peers are doing activities. So this was another a key observation that during the Swachh Bharat mission, it was realized that community was probably the right way to diffuse innovation into populations because a, a person coming from outside and dedicating behaviors is a more difficult approach for people to accept. But the moment the community internally realizes that what is it that they're trying to achieve and what is the right thing to do, it is easier to diffuse that kind of information and eventually bring about certain changes uh, in behavior. Uh, moving ahead, the two key objectives for this study uh, have been narrowed down to first, to understand that how critical the role of communication initiatives have been in the program designing of Swachh Bharat mission. And the second, of course, is that how has this uh, communication initiatives piece been reviewed from an academic point of view? So through this paper, we take into account studies and reports that aim at studying the effectiveness of communication initiatives under the Swachh Bharat mission purview. The methodology for this project has largely been selecting certain papers from the last five years to sort of understand how uh, we have to take this forward. Quickly moving on to the next slide. Uh, if, uh, due to shortness of time, I will also, so, so some of the key findings or conclusions 
that came across as a part of this study was that communication has been central in bringing behavior change. That Let us not... conclude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So various types of platforms were used at various levels, but one key learning from this study was that there is no such tool to determine the change of behavior that has actually happened. And for how long has it survived the situations and the, you know, situ uh, the, the conditions around it. Moving forward, I think towards conclusion, I think we are not denying the contribution of various levels of introductions to sanitary behaviors in people. But I think each initiatives has been evalu evaluated in a very different scale. Therefore, bringing them together does not really justify the assessment and also the leaving behind of people of a certain category is something which needs to be deep dived and studied with further interrogation. Uh, thank you so much. Social media influencers are changing the game in fashion with reference to trickle up theory. Uh, Bushra Siddiqui, research scholar, uh, along with Dr. Maithali Ganji, Professor and Dean Manav Rachnari. Over to you, Bushra. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Vishra Siddiqui, a research scholar at Manav Rachna International Institute of Research Studies. So the topic today I'm going to present is from followers to trendsetters. Our social media influencers are changing the game in fashion with reference to triple trickle theory of fashion. So in the introduction slide, as we all know, fashion is uh, fashion is an integral part of every human's life, right? Regardless of the era. And when it comes on fashion trends, people love to adopt them, people like to follow them. And uh, if you guys, if you people remember that uh, in the late 70s or the 80s or in the early 80s, when um, um, Bollywood stars like Amitabh Bachchan, Neetu Singh, Vinod Khanna, and Shashi Kapoor uh, embraced uh, bell bottom pants or trousers, uh, they, that clothing thing, uh, that clothing thing become uh, fashionable attire and people follow that attire people adopt that attire whether it is devanand's hat or white uh, white or black paint tuning or uh, that uh, um, newton's polka dot, polka dot top, Tata's yogurt. people like to follow these strings because these people these public figures are presenting those strings. And earlier from where we are getting those strings are simply from uh, television and movies, um, fashion shows, magazines. These were the mediums from where we are getting those strings. Today, social media has, uh, from the day social media has come, uh, it, this channel has become a new channel uh, who is providing these strings. I'm not saying the study is not saying that uh, these uh, conventional mediums are not uh, presenting those strings. They are still presenting those strings um, fearlessly, but uh, it has changed now. Social media has given people the opportunity. Uh, it has given many options to people. This potent medium is has come up very. Um, uh, it is providing the uh, uh, information in a very instant manner. Right, it has become a very uh, powerful tool. So the study here in the introduction part, I would only talk about that this platform has given an ordinary people a chance to become that celebrity, right? Uh, earlier they were followers, but now these people are the trendsetters. These people, this medium has given people the opportunity, the platform to express yourself, create your own identity to share your feelings, to share your wardrobe choices, to influence others. So now these, uh, this platform has given many people the opportunity to create your own identity. You all remember that earlier, things were come from royal families or actor actresses, and they, uh, what they wore become the trend. But today's fashionistas have moved beyond that. As we are running late, can you uh, go to your review? Sure, ma'am. Sure. For Theoria. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, the study, uh, as per the as per my object, uh, I have um, the aim of this study to examine the role of social media in the popularizing fashion among young people. So, how social media has worked uh, 
to you know popularize fashion among young people and the second objective was to understand the phenomena of influencers in social media research methodology talks about we have uh, uh, we uh, employ two uh, two methodologies here uh, interview and content an analysis uh, uh, we have conducted in interviews with uh, social media users equally divided by equally divided between males and females to balance the create uh, maintain the balance between the genders and uh, uh, the study uh, the study has also employed triple triple theory of fashion which earlier studies have not used in a way in uh, they have not uh, associated social media influencers with this theory so this this study tries to uh, uh, portray this way or to present this way so uh, if you talk about triple triple theory so this theory has Uh, three theories which uh, talks uh, which shows that how fashion moves so the first theory trickle up which says that uh, fashion comes from the royal families or the actor actresses second theory says about uh, the uh, trickle uh, cross theory talks about that every social group has a, has their own innovators like the way social media influencers are working every class every community has their own social media influencers and the trickle, trickle up theory talks about uh, these uh, uh, trends are coming from the bottom uh, class to the upper class uh, the finest example is the jeans jeans comes from the labor class and now uh, that that was accepted by the elite class see the uh, so we are uh, in the findings we will say that social media in social media in shaping fashion inspiration it has given people the uh, opportunity to uh, to connect with fashion enthusiasts from around the world which earlier we do not have that opportunity like uh, we do not know international uh, trend setters so this platform has given us uh, to know about other people's uh, views and other people's trends too and the second finding we have got is uh, the social media influencers impact uh, three factors were come uh, authenticity relatability and affordability in the uh, in the authenticity we got to know that people like to who before purchasing any product they like to first go and check the review what they say they buy accordingly and relatability i would say here uh, in the findings we feel we got to know that uh, social media influencers are daring a very a very daring because they share their health and skin shoes with people and they found it very re relatable the ordinary people ordinary people find found it very relatable so this is also a very major uh, uh, bushra wind up quickly you are running out of time okay okay sir okay sir and he, okay sir i'll come to the last one uh, the social media influencer and their trickle cross theory the association uh, so here i we got to know that uh, it has it is work as a primary example of the theory social media influencers because here also we have the innovators earlier as i mentioned that this platform has given people uh, become a trend setter they were earlier ordinary people they were just uh, getting those trends but now they are setting those trends now they have become the go to icons of the youngsters so the study talks about only this and the limitations of the study was uh, uh, sample size was uh, very small i would feel and the location was just uh, delhi and cr and uh, social media influences we studied only in the field of fashion so yes thank you bushra thank you Uh, so with this, I think we have we have completed all the presentations in this session. So I'll request uh, Sharmila, ma'am, to please give your valuable comments. Uh, Sharmila, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it is wonderful to hear about eight different uh, papers, which is uh, very good. One by one, I will give uh, feedback. First paper talked about craft of mangal making in Firozabad, UP. a student has done beautifully case study uh, mentioned theoretical framework method how she has done how she has approached it's very good and the overall feedback i would like to give here the gap is not present in any of your research that is you know how you take your statement of the problem forward how you see you know your research 
that is important in the contemporary times that need to be researched the rationale behind it was not been mentioned because of the lack of reviews that you have done or you have difficulty in order to find out the uh, already which has been researched in books articles or journals so i would like to request the students and the research scholars to study more to find out the gap which makes your research is unique and you know validated enough for further research then second uh, second research is sayed tabi sasan research scholar uh, presentation was not that much clear to me he talked on issues of community ownership in waste management a case study on waste uh, warriors where he had not mentioned the source or uh, any intake citation was not present in his study so he talked about eight metric tons has been find out about waste management and all but the source or the images his presence was not been mentioned so my request is that findings method no geotag pick and awareness activity also needs to be there so whenever you are writing a paper or case study of like you know waste management in your dharmsala and you know, himachal pradesh because it's a tourist uh, you know center many tourists they go and be there for you know throughout the year so many ngos are also working so how you will validate and how you look proof the substantiate proof is uh, needed uh you cannot say that eight metric tons is being you know uh, the waste has been managed the ngos are doing and you are uh, you know suggesting the government and you have talked about the community awareness also so the ngo is basically if they are devoted for uh, you know for this uh, waste management so their work is to do that kind of job so uh, you know you validate and substantiate proof also is required with uh, in text citation so i am once again i am reporting uh, repeating the source in text citation findings method geotactic and awareness activity proof is the publishing this paper in any journal so you keep this uh, in mind third paper presented uh, presenters were srishti and anaga piplic apple of odisha very good uh, you know research they have done piplic apple and the universalization acceptance relevance in the cultural practices in ratha yatra is being mentioned and uh, they are the student undergraduate i think uh, very good topic they have chosen and good work and they have mentioned the method interviews and uh, analysis they have made and uh, fourth one is yeah uh, one suggestion i want to give is that uh, when you are interviewing uh, you something we you know perspective we have in our mind pre conceived notion that should not be the case so people apply the you know the versatility how it can go to the market what is the fashion uh, statement in various forms it has been uh, you know used that need to be also taken into consideration fourth uh, one uh, fourth presenters were talked on uh, entwining brand identity we were tribes of odisha content analysis that content analysis my dear not uh, been done properly but you are a uh, student undergraduate i can understand that it's a, just a learning phase that you will be learning you know so uh, research scholar i am uh, you know that suggestion i must give now but as a student this is just a you know first stepping stone that you have put forward and you will be learning while uh, you know learning more and more in your uh, life so that you know that uh, that uh, that entwining brand identity you had talked about there are many things it's not sambalpuri is it's about the silk it's about the cotton it's about the stitch it's about the print it talks about the folk uh, tales and the uh, you know different patterns 
the the temple artist art craft the design part uh, that you know the color the code the you know the font everything is an integral part so whenever you are doing you just not uh, you know mere describing the images or whatever the you know proof photographs that we have but content analysis need to be put in the code to be validated and to be practiced but you will practice more when you will uh, put into that uh, you know uh, further you will do in your research fifth one is impact of crochet on the uh, mental health of women that uh, diva vasista and uh, dhruvana sarkar very good review uh, you know review particularly has been done beautifully by them but uh, impact the term impact is a problematic term for the qualitative study try to avoid it because you are an uh, interviewing you have interviewed and talked about the practitioners so that impact is an quantitative approach where you know the consumers been affected by certain things and you are examining their effects their factors their reasons about it so uh, good research about the process and uh, the interview is their they have said that it it reduces stress but that reduces stress their own you know uh, feelings or perception that they have told to you it's it cannot be a generalized one but overall it's very good paper sixth one doordarshan ki yatra टाइटल इट से is a statement for you it's like that your bias to about you know doordarshan ki program rag rag mein ganga that has been taken or initiated by the government because the doordarshan always you know uh, popularize the government run programs and all it's it's uh, the channel's duty is to you know run through the government initiatives and the policies or the uh, your different plans but here is the rag rag ganga how many consumers they are watching is there any behavior change communication is it altering their uh, you know attitude is there altering their behavior are they feel concern about it how the popular mediums like newspaper television they are focusing on the cleaning uh, uh, of the ganga or you know during chhat puja only the environmental hazards been shown but what next is it altering is the program being uh, you know is running but is it changing the behavior is it reflecting some attitude so that you know my uh, as a research scholar you are doing this research uh, you know right now so it is my humble request you to is to uh, you know broaden your sample study and you go you know 360 degree approach of your study to know the content of the program to ask the stakeholders and how it is affected or uh, you know facilitated by the consumers or the viewers those who are listening to it viewing to it and uh, seventh paper is megha sharma effectiveness of behavior change communication for was program in india a case study of swachh bharat mission again here you have said that open defecation but you have not mentioned that india stands very in open defecation due uh, uh, in the year 2020 the report by who and unicef india ranks uh, 15 in open defecation that is why the government of india initiated this cleanly uh, mission in urban health mission and rural health mission your toilet scheme every beneficiary of the rural people they they are getting 15 15000 for making the toilet and the twin pit is also the concept of twin pit but my submission is to you that you go to the urban slum and urban uh, you know local uh, rural areas try to find out the beneficiaries and they the their concepts and their perception about the twin pit and the toilet conception are they making it are they utilizing the government sponsored money 
and you have talked about uh, you have used so many theories sbcc theories health milieu model theory of reason action uh, which i think that one or two is uh, you know will do suffice to your research it is very you know it will be very difficult for you to prove all the three theories and you can uh, use one one theory to your research paper but not everything in at a go and objective again need to be modified uh, because you are very clear about your title but objective i think you need to be reworked and modified and method is secondary but uh, you you try to you know convert into empirical study you go talk observe ethnographic study will also uh, will be beneficial for you last paper bushra siddiqui social media influencer here bushra your title itself is a statement that you wanted to prove okay you have written the changing the game uh, the triple trickle theory here i like triple trickle theory that in your fashion uh, you have validated well but the title itself that you are it seems that you wanted to prove that there is a influences that social media influencer but who many social media social media platform can be instagram can be facebook can be twitter and can be youtube so social media influencer who who social media influencer you are talking about and how they are influencing so try to uh, take one social media platform because your sample size is very less only 10 5 male and 5 female so my request is to increase the sample size and uh, your uh, empirical study because you are talking about impact but you are you are doing secondary which is very wrong method and we, yeah content consumer so can you please repeat i asked i told that the impact itself is a uh, you know problematic because you are doing it the secondary so content consumers you need to uh, you know take the interview of and you do to uh, you go for mix method qualitative and quantitative you talk with the people or take the interview or focus group whatever it is so it will be validated both okay so yes, otherwise it is good the theory i like very much and these are the wholesome uh, you know observation of mine of uh, about eight papers that uh, we had that has been presented and thank you amrish sachana sir susmita ma'am uh, manashree ma'am for continuously uh, you know in contact with me the coach here uh, ashish chatterjee sir over to you thank you and thanks yeah and last but uh, you know thanks to all the paper presenters for patient hearing thank you thank you ma'am and thank you sir uh, as my co anchor said in the beginning this unique conference is conceptualized by dr amrish saxena professor and dean of dme media school he is the convener of icon 6 i now request sir to give the closing remarks thank you sir thank you uh, so uh, i could uh, listen very i mean the last paper is only uh but uh, i could make out because i know already that a lot of papers are being written and presented by the students and uh, I, as i was listening to the review by dr sharmila uh there were problems uh, while deciding the topic of the research while deciding the methodology of the research and all so i believe these are the areas which uh, any researcher has to work on and particularly the students who are studying at the undergraduate level or even at the post graduate level they need to wo- uh, work on these uh, things a little more though research is uh, such a subject uh, wherein the, the students even at the phd level uh, uh, find difficult to handle a lot of things so it's an uh, ongoing exercise learning is an ongoing exercise but then learning has to be on the right lines so um, uh, such kind of sessions such kind of conferences can help uh those who are interested in research to understand the methodologies in a better way to understand as to how and and, and what data is to be collected which is to be appropriate to their research and then the way they are proceeding whether they will be uh, they will be ultimately finding out the things which they initially decided to 
find out uh, through their research. So all those things need to be learned, but then nevertheless, the presentations uh, were good. And uh, what, it's encouraging that uh, such kind of presentations are being done. In the years to come, we can uh, find that if the same presenters are there, they, they might be improving and making the better presentation. Uh, my my uh, gratitude to Dr. Sharmila to be uh, here with us to chair this session uh, from Kolkata and then uh, to, to give her uh, suggestions and recommendations to the young uh, budding uh, media professionals and researchers. Thank you all. I now request everyone to turn on their camera for a group picture. All the presenters, please switch on your camera. Thank you, Shamila, ma'am, and official thank you from DME. Thank you, Ashish, sir, as a co-chair. Thank you, all the presenters, and uh, you know. Done, thank you so much, everyone. With this, we have come to the conclusion of this session. I would like to thank Dr. Sharmila Kayal and Professor Ashish Chatterjee, our chair and co-chair of this session, for their valuable, valuable time and sharing their experience with us. I extend my gratitude to the management and leadership team of DME. Heartfelt thanks to Dr. Amrish Saxena for his guidance, Dr. Susmita Bala for giving us directions and support at every stage of the conference. Special thanks to the faculty member and staff of Media School for executing all the sessions. I would love to thank the production and the technical team for providing the technical support. Special thanks to the newsletter and media coordination and social media team for the coverage of the event. I would also like to thank the designing team for creative support. I also wish to thank the administrative staff of DME. Special thanks to our conference partner, knowledge partner, international partner, and media partners. I would also like to thank Nikhil Gupta, Sandeep Adhikari, Aptanj Dubey, Sonakshi Suneja, students, volunteers, to help us in conducting this session smoothly. The recording of all this session of ICANN 6 can be accessed through the official YouTube channel DME, our social media handles, ICANN page, and DME page, and please subscribe to DME TV. The next session of this mega conference will be a roundtable session and will begin from 10 a.m. tomorrow on topic Artificial Intelligence and Integration with Media Academy. Till then, I, with my co-anchor, Trapti, would like to take your leave. Stay tuned for many, many exciting sessions at ICANN 6. Thank you so much, everyone.